conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, LA Lakers fans around the world. What is up? It's me, PFE, Paul F. The Riel, the NBA expert, and we're here to discuss in the long video format the Lakers 101 to 94 overtime loss tonight to the Denver Nuggets in Staples Center, Los Angeles, California. With a defeat, Lakers dropped to 3 and 11 on the season. Denver Nuggets improved to 6 and 7 on the year and they have won their last 4 games in a row. Quickly going over statistics, Kobe 27.6 rebounds, 4 assists. It was 10 of 24 shooting. Jeremy Lin, 17 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, 3 turnovers, 36 minutes played, 8 of 15 shooting, including 0 of 4 from 3-point range, 1 of 3 from the free throw line, plus minus was a minus 2. For the Nuggets, Wilson Chandler, 19 points, 8 rebounds. Ty Lawson, 18 points, 3 rebounds, 16 assists. Okay, what happened in this game was it was actually a, a very close game throughout, as you might imagine, in an overtime game. The Lakers played good defense. Both teams were a little sloppy at times. The Lakers did have a chance to close this out late in, in regulation. Kobe didn't shoot well in the fourth and I think he also didn't shoot particularly well in overtime. So it's kind of uh, – he just missed shots. And you'll sometimes hear the NBA described as a make-or-miss league. What that means is that's that's usually what it comes down to. You make shots, you win. You miss shots, you lose. Tonight, Kobe missed shots and the Lakers missed shots late, and they lost. Um, I'm not, look, I mean, the Lakers certainly could have won this game and I would have been a lot happier if they had won it, but overall I feel pretty good because the team played well. They competed well. Denver's been on a nice run lately. They've beaten, they beat Cleveland in Cleveland. They beat a few other teams. They beat the New Orleans Pelicans. They're not a pushover and the Lakers had good effort in this game, and I thought they executed pretty well. They're clearly improving. So uh, I, I just I, I'm not super upset about this, although I certainly would be happier had the team won. In terms of Jeremy, Jeremy played well in this game. He was really good in the third quarter, and we'll talk more about that in, in a bit. He, this is back to back good games for him. And as I mentioned in the short video, this is the eighth time in the last 10 games in which he played well. So during the broadcast, and I watched the feed from the Lakers, they mentioned earlier in the game, you never know what you're going to get with Jeremy and the inconsistency. Well, now he's starting to, he's starting to get more consistent. The two games that he had that were bad recently, which were against Houston and Golden State, I believe. Is that? Yeah. Uh, those are two of the top five defenses in the league, I believe. And Houston gave Jeremy a tremendous amount of attention when he was doing pick and rolls. They were really doubling him up and hard hedging, and they, they really worked on him. Golden State's just a terrific defensive team. So... I really liked the way Jeremy played in this game tonight. I really liked it a lot. So from that perspective, I'm totally happy about the way that that, that things went tonight for, for him. Um, he played good defense. He was aggressive. He's definitely getting more comfortable. I mentioned that on Twitter earlier tonight, and you can see it. He's starting to settle in and figure things out. The only negatives I can really say about him, and he had three turnovers, but that's not, I mean, three turnovers in 36 minutes, it's not that bad. Um, and two of them were fairly early on, and then didn't, he didn't have one for quite a while after that. 
So really, the only negative, I guess you could say about him, in my opinion, was that he was 0 for 4 from three-point range, and he came in shooting over 40%. So that, that just happens. It just, just keeps shooting, and, and the numbers will go back up. It's just the law of averages type of thing. Uh, I Like I said, I, I like the way that he played. Now, there was a moment down the stretch of this game in the overtime where, where – Byron Scott took him out and inserted Wayne Ellington in, but that didn't bother me that much. There were two reasons why I think Byron Scott did that. One, he wanted somebody taller to play against uh, Ty Lawson. Jeremy's about 6'2", 6'3", and Wayne uh, Ellington's, I think, like 6'4", 6'5". And just give him a little bit more length against Ty Lawson, make him shoot over somebody taller. And also... Wayne Ellington had hit two three-pointers in the game, and Jeremy had hit zero. And so they needed some shooting on the court that much. So that wasn't – I wasn't bothered by that. It didn't offend me. I wasn't – that's this wasn't a big deal to me. And uh, so that's about it. I mean, in terms of just summarizing things before we go over things more, uh, more in-depth – I also like, from the Lakers' perspective, I like that Wesley Johnson was aggressive in this game. He had a fantastic dunk on on a steal and assist from Jeremy Lin. And what both Jeremy and Wesley must do, and they're starting to do it more, is keep shooting. Stay aggressive. The thing that I saw in Wes tonight was that he, he, he had no hesitation on his shots. Don't think, just shoot. Even if you miss, just shoot. That's what you see. Kobe does that. Nick Young does that. That's what those. That's what Jeremy and Wesley need to do because they're guys that'll think a lot, maybe lose their confidence a little bit. And I thought they did great with that tonight. So very happy about that. Like I said, look, Robert Sacre played great tonight. Thirteen re- points. The team's starting to. It, it's starting to come together. It's starting to come together. It, it's still going to take time, but I, I like I like how they're growing. I like it. You can see the progress here. So, again, overall, I'm happy. I've been happier with the win, but I'm happy because they're playing the right way, and they're they're developing. They're they're growing towards becoming a better team with better chemistry better offensive execution, better defensive execution. Without Carlos Boozer in there, you definitely could see the difference, in my opinion, on the pick-and-roll defense. The big men, Jordan Hill and Ed Davis, really were getting out and double-teaming or hedging whenever Denver was running pick-and-roll. Hedging just means it, it's when a guy comes up and double teams off the pick and roll and he doesn't stay there. Like he'll hedge for maybe five seconds and then go back to his main. A double, a true double team is you stay there and you stay with him. You basically trap the guy. Hedging is to stop the, the player that's coming off of the screen from going to the basket. And the Lakers did a very good job of that tonight with with Ty Lawson. Really good. So they're improving. They are improving. Uh, As far as Carlos Boozer, his injury wasn't bad. It's not bad. It's just just a little wear and tear. Carlos is 33 years old, like like a ding or a bruise or something. Hopefully he'll be back in the next game. So like I said, uh, for an overview, that's about it. they, they put a good effort in tonight. They, they just weren't able to execute quite well enough down the, down, the, down the stretch. I will say this, too, quickly, in terms of with Kobe shooting and Lynn and everything. In the overtime period, Kobe allowed Jeremy to start things out, and if I remember correctly, and I have it written down. And like a couple sequences didn't work or didn't get baskets or something like that. And then Kobe started taking over. So I do give Kobe credit 
because I think he knew he was a little cold in the fourth quarter. And so he let the team and Jeremy go and do try to run things and do their own thing at the start of overtime. And then it didn't work, or Denver got ahead, and then Kobe came and took over. But he didn't take over immediately. He 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 tried to back off. So I know people are mad at him and shoot for shooting, particularly Lynn fans. But um, he he did back off for a bit. So he's 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 working at that. And as the team gets better and stronger and Jeremy gets more confident and more uh, the team builds more chemistry, then Kobe can back off more. And I think he'll be able to do that more and more as time goes along. So I actually was I was pretty happy with the way Kobe played in this game, to be honest with you. And I know a lot of people will not be happy with it. But I think for much of this game, he played properly. And you saw him finding Jeremy on three-point attempts and stuff. It's just, again, once Kobe gets it in his head that it's not working or the team's missing shots or or whatever, then he'll take over. It's just a matter of how quickly does that happen. And I think once he starts, he's gaining more confidence in the team. You saw him clearly looking for Jeremy on three-pointers tonight. Why? Because Jeremy came in shooting over 40%. Kobe knows that. So it's it's like I said, it's it's he's aware of stuff and he's it's that's getting better and I think it will get better and better as the season goes along and as the as yeah, basically as the season goes along. So I just say that in in defense of of Kobe, I guess. Okay, let's do some, uh, let me see here. Actually, no, there's a couple of things I want to say before I do quarter by quarter. Um, Number one, people have told me, a couple different people, that people, other people are copying our videos and putting them on YouTube. I am aware of that, and I will take them down. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. John and I, look, we've been doing this, we've been on YouTube for, at least five years, maybe more than that, actually probably more than that. We've had to deal with this many times before. So it's, I'm used to it. I know it. I'm not surprised by it. I don't like it, but I will get to it and and take it down. So I just want you guys to know that I'm, uh, I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. But, and you know, if you see it, let me know because then it makes it easier. Now, you know, if you guys let me know, then I'll, I can ding everybody that's doing it. I did not get a chance to do the Game 13 long video. So sorry about that because I said I would do it. I just didn't have a chance to do it. Just some other things came up. I just didn't have time to do it. So that's what happened. One other comment I want to make, and many people have already said this. I don't like the way the referees have been with Jeremy. I don't think he's getting enough respect. And that was particularly the case in the Dallas game. That foul that was called on him, the supposed offensive foul for kicking his leg out, that was ridiculous. That was his normal shooting motion, in my opinion. And then later, I think I saw him talking to one of the refs. And if I could, if I read the interaction correctly, it looked like the referee was telling him not to talk to him, like just dissing him. It's like, dude, give me a break. I, I would like to see Jeremy get more respect from the refs. So hopefully that will happen at some point in time. And look, he's, he is good at drawing fouls, but just as sometimes as he just doesn't get calls and, uh, well, hopefully that will get better and better. Also, I believe Jeremy came into this game with a, a kind of a sore back. I believe that was the case. I think he twisted his back in a recent game. Finally, as I mentioned, Carlos Boozer did not play in this game, and that meant that Ed Davis started. Ed played; he played he played some uh, pretty solidly, but he fouled out of the game in a relatively short period of time. So he's got to keep working on managing uh, his fouls that he accumulates. So, okay, 
Now let's go to let's go to quarter by quarter. I'll just again, I'll just pick out some selected stuff. Early in the first, Jeremy got his first assist of the game. Found Kobe for a nice little bank shot that Kobe hit. And what I noticed is that the Lakers were using more of the Kobe and Jeremy pick and roll. And sometimes you will hear pick and roll plays described as numbers involving the positions of the players involved. The point guard is number one. Shooting guard is a number two. So what they were Lakers were doing was using a one-two pick and roll. And they're using it more and more, which is a smart play because those are two of the best players on your team, and they're both effective. You know, Jeremy's obviously a tremendous pick and roll player, and Kobe is just in- extremely skilled in all facets of the game. So having those two run the pick and roll is a really smart thing, and I'm I'm glad that Byron is doing it more and more because it's an effective play. Um, I made a note here. It says confidence. Notice that Jeremy was definitely confident and aggressive early in this game. He's he's definitely settling in. He's starting to get more comfortable with things. And I, as I said, I mentioned on Twitter earlier that you're going to see better and better of Jeremy. Because as we've talked about in various videos, Jeremy is somebody that they need. he needs to feel comfortable. He needs to feel settled in to play his best. Not everybody is like that. Some guys, you just take them in a new city, put them in there, and they're going to play the way they always play. But Jeremy's a guy that he thinks a lot. He's sensitive. He, he's, he's aware of things a lot. And he just takes him time to find his groove and his comfort zone, and he's starting to find it. And I think, again, this is its like we're starting to turn a corner here. I think you're going to start seeing more consistency from him, more steady aggressiveness, and more, more uh, confidence like more reserve confidence rather than, oh, no, made a couple of mistakes in a row, and there goes the confidence. So I, I think it's getting it better and better from here. Then also early in the first, Jeremy had his first turnover of the game. He did the move, which he does all, often, which is to he dribbles, and then he stops, and then he pivots around, and he – wanted to take a shot but the defense was on him too closely like he didn't have a a shot if he would have shot it he would have gotten blocked so he's up in the air and he tried to pass the ball and he had anywhere to go Jeremy has to keep working at this this isn't so much the jump to pass it's you have to read the situation for Jeremy he's the upshot of this is try to put yourself in good positions rather than getting in a position where you might not have enough space to, to take a jump shot, really, or you might end up up in the air and having to pass. So it's just work on finding your spots on the floor and your, your comfort areas. And this will get better and better. This is just something he needs to keep. He needs more repetitions and just more working through this. This is like has to do with decision making and not trying to do too much. But he's definitely improving on this. In the past, he there was he would try to do way too much. Now he's getting more selective about it. And in the future, he'll get even more selective. For example, if you're on a drive like this, Now, again, the reason why you stop and you do a pivot is to create space, is to you stop and then you turn and your defender might keep going because you're driving and all of a sudden you stop. So they might kind of keep going. You turn around and you've got space. 
But if the move is a little bit slow or you're, you have an athletic defender, you might not get that much space. And so it's just kind of realizing what you can and can't do. So maybe instead, maybe you, you drive, and instead of doing a stop pivot move, you just drive and shoot a floater. Or you don't drive into the lane unless you can see a really good opening. So it's just kind of, again, it's, it's decision-making stuff. It's knowing your limits, working with your limits. But as I said, Jeremy's better at this now than he used to be, and he will continue to get better at it. I'm sure of that. Okay, then Jeremy had his first score of the game. He had a nice little layup in transition right over Ty Lawson. Jeremy knew, and this was mentioned multiple times in the game, Ty Lawson's an excellent player. He's extremely quick, good at ball handling skills. Just he's a he's a, he's a very good player, but he's not that tall. And so Jeremy knows that he can go over the top of, of Ty Lawson anytime he wants, whether it's taking a jump shot or doing a layup in transition. Ty Lawson's not going to be able to stop Jeremy because he's not tall enough. So um, Jeremy was taking advantage of that. Then I made a note also early in the first that Jeremy was playing very good defense on Ty Lawson, and that was excellent to see. Um then Jeremy, and this is another this is another uh, set of things that Jeremy's got to get better at. He got blocked by Timofey Mozgov, the center for the Nuggets, on a layup attempt. Uh, Jeremy had gotten by Ty Lawson, and he went up for the layup attempt, and and Timofey got it and blocked it. And what what the Lakers analyst said was that. Jeremy showed the ball too quickly. What that means is if you approach a layup and you take a long step and take a long jump and you're kind of sitting there with the ball out, then the big man can 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 time it. They can prepare for it. So sometimes you want to kind of cover up the ball, keep the ball lower, don't let the big man know where it is until the last minute. So that's something Jeremy wants to work on. And what he also needs to work on when it comes to the, the driving layups is protect the ball. If you notice, Jeremy, he he still has a tendency to – he will get by his man – and then the the man will strip him from behind, and that's because he's not not protecting the ball quite well enough. Put the ball closer to your body. Put the ball in front of your body. Keep it away from where a man behind you can poke it. Because Jeremy's so fast, he can get by almost anybody off the dribble. But some of these guys are they're deliberately looking to be able to, to poke the ball from him from behind because he's still got to work at, at a little bit of more ball security. And it's like I said, these are these are these are very fixable things, very correctable, and they will improve over time. I'm sure of that. These are just these are common things. So he's got to work on this whole ball security and not showing the ball too early on these layups and drives, and decision-making about when, how to be selective in your driving. Know when you've got, when you might have an advantage, when you might not be able to get an advantage, when not to try to make a pass, when to keep dribbling and keep your dribble rather than stopping your dribble, which might get you into a tough spot. So again, these are give them a give them a, another summer or two, and this will be a lot better. I'm, I'm it'll get better and better. So, but uh, this is just typical stuff for inexperienced players. And again, somebody like Jeremy who is still transforming in a lot of ways from the college shooting guard 
to the NBA point guard, it's even more expected. So, but like I said, I'm happy with his progress. These are just things that are many players have to work on as their their young players in the NBA. Particularly as it's different when you're going against college athletes versus professional athletes. Particularly college athletes in the Ivy League conference versus NBA level players. There are things that you can do against college level players that you just can't do against NBA players. It just won't work. So he's learning all of that, and and uh, he will continue to get better and better with it. Okay, middle of the second, Jeremy had his second turnover. So as I said, he had two turnovers fairly early in this game, and then he had no turnovers for a long time after that. So he'll do this at times. I will refer to his turnover bundles. We'll get a turnover a couple in a short period of time, and then there won't be any for a while. So it's good that he settled in. Jeremy drove towards the lane, drove towards the basket, and then he kicked the ball out. But he was too – he was in a little bit too deep, and, and he didn't have the angle. So it basically became another situation of where jumping to pass. So you don't want to make moves that you don't know the conclusion to. You always want to know what you're going to do before you jump, before you you get in too far. So again, in that situation, maybe instead of if you you don't have a great angle for a shot or for a layup, maybe you maybe you put up a floater. Instead, just lay, you know, throw the ball up rather than kicking it out for a turnover. And I, I do. He will get better at this as well. So these are just little things to learn. These are simple things to learn. But as he learns them and improves them, he'll be m- even more effective. And you'll see fewer and fewer turnovers in particular. So um, then I heard some fan. I don't know if it was a Denver fan or just an angry Laker fan that I think said, you suck, Jeremy. I'm just like, dude, you're a Laker fan? What are you talking about? You shouldn't be saying that. But the crowd was the crowd was relatively quiet or the, the microphones are really strong or whatever because they were picking up everything. And you'll see this in certain games where – it's it's just a the crowd's not that big or the crowd's not that loud and you can hear everything. Like in this the the feed I was watching, which was was Time Warner Cable Sportsnet, you could hear everything the fans were saying that were sitting close to the announcers. You could hear a lot of what the players were saying. <laughs> I mean, it was just so you will get games like that, and it's it's funny. I mean, it's the players talk a lot. They particularly they talk a lot to the refs, so you could hear a lot of stuff. So. I just I heard that fan. I'm just like, dude, give me a break. Okay, now one thing I noticed in this game, what Jeremy did that was fantastic, was he wasn't over helping on defense. What I mean by that is he was staying close to Ty Lawson, and Jeremy's natural instinct is to help out on defense to kind of leave his man and sag towards the middle of, of, of the paint. But he didn't do that tonight, and that was good. Good. Remember, the, the basic rule with playing help defense is do not help so much that you cannot recover to guard your man if your man gets the ball. So if you're helping out a lot and then the ball comes back out on a pass to your man and you can't guard him, then you help too much. And so what I liked about Jeremy Knight is he stayed with Ty Lawson most of the time. He was helping much less. That's good. That was good. He did not leave Ty Lawson hardly at all tonight. That's a real improvement. That's a real improvement. I don't know if it was a, a game plan thing where they told him, do not leave Ty Lawson. My guess is is that Jeremy himself made the adjustment. He knew for the Lakers to win, he had to be able to do a reasonable job guarding Ty Lawson, and he did that. Ty Lawson outplayed him. That's the truth. 
Not by a huge amount, though. Jeremy held his own, and he played some excellent defense against Ty Lawson tonight. He was better than Ronnie was against Ty Lawson, considerably better. Yeah, Ty Lawson got him a couple times late in the game, but Jeremy did a very good job on Ty Lawson for most of this game. He was bothering Ty Lawson, and he did a nice job of staying in front of Ty Lawson for most of the game. And like I said, part of the defense that he did and did well was staying with him when Ty Lawson didn't have the ball. That's important. That's really important. So I was I was very pleased with the way De- Jeremy played defense in this game. Okay, Jeremy came out of the game with four minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter. The score was tied 13-13. No team with the advantage there. Um, looking at my notes here really quickly. Yeah, Ty Lawson having an easier time against Ronnie Price than he was against Jeremy. He definitely was having, he was happy Ronnie was in the game rather than Jeremy. I, I could see that. Okay, just going through my notes here, so there'll be some pauses. Okay, yeah, I put sloppy, sloppy game. So the game was, if you play an 82-game schedule, you're going to get games like this. It's just teams can't play their best every single night. That's why in, in the playoffs you'll see a different level because that's when play, teams are usually at their maximum. They're completely focused unless it's just a great team against a poor team and they don't need to be focused. But during the season, it's just you just you can't have the same energy level every single night. So the Lakers did have good defensive energy tonight. And they were executing fairly well, but there were definitely times in this game where both teams were just kind of uh, just kind of bleh. I thought Denver was relatively flat in this game. Like, for example, I watched them play at Cleveland. They were so sharp in that game. It was incredible. Tonight, they were not at that level. And this is I, this is what can happen when you think you're playing a team that's not that good. So Denver's like, well, the Lakers aren't very good. We'll, we'll, we'll win. We don't have to play a maximum effort. Whereas they went to Cleveland thinking, we got to play our best game, and they did do that. So, again, over a long season, you will see this a lot. You just see where the level of effort and energy changes. And early in the game, it wasn't there for either team, but not, not at the level that, it's, that they're capable of playing at. Okay, moving into the second quarter, um, let's see here. Jeremy came back into the game the middle of the second. Jeremy and Kobe came in for Ronnie Price and Nick Young. Then the announcer said that it's been hit and miss with Jeremy this year. And so this is the whole inconsistent Jeremy thing, which we know earlier in the year it was Jeremy's not good on the road, which has been disproven recently. Yeah, and Ty Lawson was trying to hand check Jeremy. Hand checking is a type of defense where you you literally put your hand on the offensive man to try to contain them. This is what somebody that has the ball in their hand, they're dribbling, and you, you put your hand on them to kind of prevent them from moving quickly. In the NBA, you're not allowed to do that anymore on defense. You used to be able to do it, but now you cannot do it. Ty was reaching his hand out, and Jeremy was smacking his hand down. So that was good. Like I said, Jeremy's getting more assertive. He's starting to come into his own as a Laker. So like I said, I like the confidence and the swag that he had in this game. One of the other things that I noticed, just watching the the feed is, and this isn't a surprise, and I was actually talking about this earlier on Twitter as well, there were tons of, of Asian fans at this game. Now, there are many, many fans of Asian heritage in Southern California. Many people, not even just fans, just just people. But you, I have absolutely noticed this over the last, I don't know, 10 years. 
the NBA and basketball in general has grown tremendously in popularity in Asian countries. And you can see that trickling down to people in America of Asian heritage. If you watch any game now, any any NBA game, you will see in almost anywhere, you will see a substantial number of fans that are of Asian heritage, just, just in the courtside seats, just in the first, I don't know, 10 rows. I mean, there was heavy, heavy Asian presence at this game. I think it's great. Numerically, Asians make up a, a very large percentage of the, the world's population. And I, so it's, and the, or the, the, the economics of the world right now, a lot of the Asian nations are doing really well or they're, they're on the rise. So the NBA wants their business. And it's good that the game is growing in that segment because it means more money is going to come in. And more fans are going to be interested and more eyeballs are going to be on the, on the product if you're the NBA. So I think it's tremendous. It's great. It's, and you can see it. Now, I'm sure there's many fans of the Lakers who are of Asian background. I mean, the Lakers are gigantic in the Philippines. I know that. I'm sure a lot of those fans were there before Jeremy came around. I'm sure a lot of them will be there when he's no longer there. But it's 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 a good fit. It's a good market for Jeremy, and for the Lakers, it's a good thing to have Jeremy on the team. It works for everybody. So it's as I said. I I know on Twitter earlier talking about an article from Mike Bresnahan of the Los Angeles Times, and he was talking about how Jeremy is the biggest trading chip for the Lakers right now, which is probably true because of his contract. I don't think that I, I can't see them trading him. I really don't think that's going to happen this year. I'm not saying it couldn't possibly happen, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. And not just because of the fans, but because Jeremy's a good player. Even if you traded him, first of all, who are you going to trade him for? If you trade him, who are you going to get? And are you going to get somebody that's really going to affect I mean, you're not going to get anybody that's probably going to affect this season. So then you have to really get somebody good to try to build for the future. But then you're giving up on Lynn, who's looking pretty good himself. So when you factor in all of these different elements, I, I just I don't think Jeremy's going to get traded. Again, I'm not saying he couldn't possibly be traded, but if I were the Lakers, I definitely wouldn't trade him for a number of reasons. So, uh, like I said, I mean, he's it, – it's just this is the perfect market for him. Like, this is the best market in the NBA for him. And the Lakers are smart. The Lakers are very good at public relations, PR, marketing. They know their stuff. They know – how valuable Jeremy is and not just how valuable he is in general, but how valuable he is for them and their team and their market. So that's, that's just my own feeling about that. Okay. Then Jeremy had, he almost had another turnover. He was caught up in the air again and he had to he pass the ball. And fortunately, Kobe was able to track it down. As I said, don't, Jeremy's got to work within his own limits. Don't try to do too much. And just keep working with what you can do. Find your spots and work with that. And he is getting better at that. He, As I mentioned, he is getting better at that. So he, he, it's, it's, it's something that will improve more and more as time goes along. Okay. Then, late in the second, Jeremy had a second assist. Nice little pass to Wesley. Then Wesley beat Danilo Gallinari along the left baseline for a dunk. That was an excellent play. Soon after that, Jeremy had his second score of the game. 
he drove past Ty Lawson and then he did a little pump fake, meaning he he pretended he was going to shoot. Basically, you fake the ball up. And what that does is it gets the defender to jump oftentimes or get or move out of position because they're, they're trying to block your shot. So he did an up fake against Mozgov. Mozgov went by him, and then Jeremy just scored a nice little easy layup. That was a tremendous play. And what it also showed is that Jeremy was more aware of Mozgov because Mozgov blocked a shot earlier. Okay, I, you blocked me earlier, so now I'm going to fake you up. You're going to go by me, and I'm going to get a layup. That's a nice little adjustment that, that, that Jeremy made there. Then I think... Yeah, then Jeremy was talking to Kobe as the Lakers went to a timeout. So I said, these guys talk all the time. Obviously, Jeremy's a very intelligent guy, and he's the point guard, meaning he's got to he's got to know everything that's going on. Well, Jeremy knows how smart Kobe is, so whatever Jeremy sees, or if he sees something, he's going to tell Kobe that. That's why those guys talk so much. Kobe knows how smart Jeremy is, and Jeremy knows how smart and and how knowledgeable Kobe is. That's why those guys are always constantly sharing information about what they're seeing that's going on during the game so that they can take advantage of it. Then, let's see here. Um, yeah, one of the things I really liked in this game, and this is for all the people that are, that are getting on Kobe, Late in the second quarter, still, Jordan Hill grabbed a rebound. On the on, he grabbed a defensive rebound. Denver missed a shot. Jordan Hill got it. First thing he did was he looked to Kobe because he was going to pass the ball to Kobe. But Kobe told Jordan Hill, "No, pass the ball to Jeremy." So it's like I said, Kobe is definitely building trust. Or his trust is growing in Jeremy. I thought again. I thought Kobe let Jeremy do different things in this game. It's an increasingly more so than he had a few games ago. He was looking for Jeremy on three pointers. He was letting Jeremy run the offense to begin the overtime. He and Jeremy missed three pointers and. The offense didn't score in overtime. So then in those situations, then Kobe will change. I saw Kobe look off Jeremy for a three-point attempt later in the game. In other words, Jeremy was open and Kobe didn't pass the ball. Why? Because Jeremy hadn't made any three-pointers. So this will it, it will keep getting better and better. So And Kobe is learning. He is adapting. And that's good to see. Shows you know he respects Jeremy, and Jeremy's doing well. So it's 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 he's earning the the trust of Kobe. So that is getting better and better. Okay, then and on that point, Kobe then uh, passed the ball right before halftime to Jeremy for a three point attempt from about twenty five degrees left of the top of the arc, and um. I said that was, so that was the, let's see, that was the second three-point attempt that Jeremy had missed. But it's good. Look, he knows he's shooting well from three. He knows that his, 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 he's getting better and better with this. So, shoot. Guys need you to shoot. You're hitting shots. Take the shot. Even if you miss. Look, Nick Young in this game was like two of 12 from the field. Nick's just going to keep shooting. And so is Kobe. That's the mentality Jeremy needs to have. He's getting better with it. And as he continues to consistently perform well, and as he continues to consistently hit three-pointers, he will get more and more like that. He's just, he's growing into it. As I'm always comparing Jeremy and Wesley. They're both players that are, again, their confidence is still a little up and down, but they're getting better. They're getting more aggressive. They're shooting more. What you have to do is you have to just work your way through it. So if you start out a game and you're zero of six on the field, well, keep shooting. Maybe you can end up six of 
13, 6 of 14. But you have to keep shooting or else you can't, you can't, you can't get on a roll. And Jeremy's getting better with that. And so is Wesley. And like I said, I think that's going to improve even more in the time to come. Okay, moving on into the third quarter. Put made a note early in the third, Lakers playing solid defense. And they are. They're getting better and better. Then I noticed that I think Jeremy was talking with Ty Lawson when someone was shooting free throws. So that's good. That's nice to see. Uh, Jeremy had his third score of the game. He drove to, on the right-hand side of the basket, kind of stopped around like the middle of the paint, although he was outside of the paint, like to the the right side of the paint, but like uh, on the same uh, horizontal as like where the post is, and he shot a little bank shot off the, the glass. That was terrific. That was great. Then I put here, Wesley and Jeremy are staying aggressive, and it's working. So neither of them were, were were had great offense in the first half, but they came out and they kept shooting. Wesley hit a shot, and now Jeremy hit a shot. This is exactly the way that they need to play, and it's exactly the way that the team wants them to play. So when Byron Scott or Kobe says to Jeremy, keep shooting, this is what they mean. Just because you didn't start out well or the first half wasn't great, keep going. And Jeremy did that, and he had a huge third quarter. It was by far the best quarter of the game for him. Okay, then then Jeremy was beaten by Ty Lawson, and I think he, he fouled Ty Lawson. Or actually, no, Ty Lawson got by Jeremy. He passed the ball to Timothy Mozgov, and then Mozgov was fouled going for a dunk. And you could see after the play that Jeremy was mad at himself for letting Ty Lawson get by him. So that's good. I said, take the challenge on defense. And tonight, he definitely took the challenge and was successful with it for the majority of the game. Then, Jeremy scored his fourth basket of the game. He did a little give-and-go play with, with Kobe, passed the ball to Kobe, then he cut. Kobe got the ball back to him, and I believe he... Yeah, he hit a little jump shot from basically the left free throw line extended. So, like, going same horizontal as the free throw line, a little bit over to the left. That was nice. And now he was he had, he was 4 of 8 or 50% from field goals. And before those last two makes, he was 2 of 6, which is 33%. So, it's like, oh, I'm not shooting. Why well, should stop? No, keep shooting. And now you're going to get up to 50%, which is what he did. And that's that's it. Keep going, keep, stay aggressive. Then he had his third assist of the game to Kobe for a little jump hook that Kobe did in the lane, which was a nice shot. Then he had an uh, a would-be assist that was interrupted because uh, the player got fouled. He passed the ball like full length of the court to Kobe. Kobe was going up for a layup, and then he was fouled by Ty Lawson to prevent the, the layup. So, again, that doesn't count as an assist for Jeremy, but it was a great play, and basically he made the play happen. Then moving on to the middle of the third, Jeremy had his fifth score of the game. This was a really good play, and the Stu Lance, the analyst for the Lakers, praised Jeremy for it. He drove to the basket and made a layup on the right side, I believe, yeah, and was fouled, and he made the free throw. What Jeremy did was he realized that the big men were not back. They were not back or they were not ready or set to play defense. So, in other words, nobody was guarding the paint after the first line of defense. So he beat Ty or whoever was guarding him, and the big man came late, fouled him, and he got the layup. That was a tremendously good play, and it was a very smart play. Then, soon after that, he had his sixth score of the game. He, Denver turned the ball over. Jeremy raced out. Wesley threw the ball ahead to him, and then Jeremy basically got a layup right over Ty Lawson. And then that led to a Denver timeout. And the Lakers were ahead 56-51 to with 7 minutes and 24 seconds left. 
And then you could see Jeremy walking back to the Lakers bench, kind of bobbing his head. Like, yeah, yeah. See, his confidence is growing. He's really starting to find his groove. It's coming now. And it's, I think it's going to get better and better. Then I put Lakers defense. Great Ed Davis pick and roll help on on for Jeremy. So it was, this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, Ed's man set a pick on Jeremy to help get Ty Lawson free. And Ed came out and kept Ty Lawson from turning the corner, from getting around and going to the basket. That's the type of pick and roll defense that the Lakers were not playing earlier in the year. So when you're seeing this stuff and guys are doing layups over Carlos Boozer or Jordan Hill, that's the wrong defense. Tonight was the right defense. Ed Davis was good at it, and so was Jordan Hill. Those two in particular stood out to me. That's the way it's supposed to be played. And they're capable of doing it. It's an effort thing, and it's a focus thing. And tonight they had that, and it was really good to see. So, again, expect that to get better and better. Because now they can look at this, and the coaches can say, we know you can do it, you just did it. So I think that's going to improve as we, we keep going along here. Then uh, Ty made a nice play on Jeremy. He kind of he got Jeremy kind of turned around, spinning around, and then he uh, he got beyond Jeremy, and it, it forced Ed Davis to foul Ty Lawson going up for the shot, and that was the fourth foul on, on Ed Davis. Then Jeremy had a nice little play. He, he did a probe dribble. That's where you kind of you go into the lane and then you do like a circle. You kind of circle around looking for a weakness in the defense. Passed it out to Jordan Hill for a wide open shot, which was missed. But then Robert Sacre got he, – he grabbed the ball coming off the rim and dunked it in. That whole entire play was basically created by Jeremy because – the defense was following him around, and so a whole bunch of Jordan Hills open for the, the shot, and Robert Sacre's man's probably still out of position because of Jeremy drawing him to to him on the drive. So that was a really nice play. Okay, then George, uh, excuse me, then Jeremy had his seventh and I believe final score. Oh no, it wasn't his final score. It's the seventh score of the game. He drove to the basket, stopped. And then kind of pulled back, faded away from uh, for a jump shot from the free throw line. Right after that, then he had an assist to Robert Sacre for a jump shot made. Then I made a note that just said, Linsanity roll. This is true Linsanity mode. Because, again, the true Linsanity is scoring and passing. And so what happens is Jeremy will will work with what the defense gives him. If you, once he starts getting in a groove, if you double team him or whatever, then he's going to pass the ball to an open man for a shot. And once he's in this groove, if you don't double team him, then he's going to go up and, and hit shots. And he's going to go to the basket and make layups. This is, this is how insanity looked and what it looks like. So as I said, it wasn't a fluke. And he always has that ability within him. It happens to be with where's his confidence at, and and that'll get better. It'll get more consistent over time as he regains him, him, his uh, his mental sharpness after the, the whole Houston stuff. So where's his confidence at? And is he being allowed to run the offense? And is the offense operating properly? Or is the spacing okay? Is there enough space for him to operate? So if 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 he's confident and you give him space, then then sanity can happen. And it's always been that way. It it, it could well it he was ready to do it in New York, he was ready to do it in Houston, and he's ready to do it now. Except now he's better than when he was in New York. So it's it's always been there. 
it's still there now. It's not going away. So it's just nice to see him on this little roll. This is what it looks like. And this is going to, again, this is going to help him to gain, regain even more confidence and start climbing the ladder back up to the way that he felt in New York. Great. That's fantastic. That's really good to see. Okay. Then late in the third, Jeremy had his third and final turnover of the game. He drove on the left side of the the paint. He stopped, and it was double teamed. He, nobody from the Lakers came to help him really quickly, and he kind of, I'm not going to say panicked, but he, he got a little bit, a little antsy, and one of the, 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 one of the players from the Nuggets, you know, came in and, and took the ball from him. Now, he thought he was fouled. I couldn't really tell. He probably was. He was really upset, so I, I would imagine he, he definitely felt he got hit. And uh, look, it was um, it was a tough play. The Lakers analyst said he should have kept his dribble in that position. That's probably true. Like I said, there are ways for him to avoid these these tough spots. Look, sometimes you're just going to get double teamed. It just happens. I think what he should have done in that situation is just wait, you know, protect the ball, wrap the ball up. And just wait a second or two longer, and somebody from your team will come and help you out. And if you can't do anything and you're trapped, take a timeout. Just take a timeout. So this was the only bad play of the quarter for him. So it's really hard to be upset with him. He just had such a brilliant quarter. It just, that was the only little thing. And like I said, this will, in the future, you won't see this. Or you will see it much less. Okay, then Jeremy came out of the game. The score was 67-66 to Denver. Three minutes and 14 seconds left in the game. Jeremy and Wesley came out, and they were replaced by Ronnie and Nick Young. Uh, okay, let's see here. Yeah, then I put Jeremy's consistent. This is the eighth good game in the last ten games. And I also made the note that Jeremy needs space to operate well. That's why spacing is so important on offense for him. Um, if you give him enough space, then he's going to be able to do his thing, and that's that's what he showed once again tonight. Okay, heading into the fourth. The Lakers came out on in the fourth quarter with Ronnie, Nick, Wayne Ellington, Ed Davis, and Robert Sacre. That unit kind of they didn't play great in the start of the fourth quarter. It kind of took a little bit of the energy away from the Lakers, I I felt. I'm not going to say it cost them the game. It didn't. They only went into the fourth with a three-point lead, so it wasn't like it was some massive super swing. But I I think that the level kind of fell a little bit. And there was a the, – the Lakers took a timeout with nine minutes and 51 seconds left. And at that point in time, the score was tied, and they had just messed up because Denver had shot the ball they missed, and Denver got the offensive rebound, and then I think they scored. And then you could see going to the timeout that Byron was really upset. Like, hey, rebound the freaking ball. You know, play better defense. So it's like I said, this the energy wasn't quite there in that little stint of, of, of the fourth quarter, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. I mean, that's that can happen. After that play, or shortly thereafter, Jeremy and Kobe came back in because, again, Byron was not happy with that unit. It just wasn't getting it done enough. Also, Denver, I believe, to start the fourth quarter, went to a full court press. That is where you are playing defense and you guard the man all the way up the court. In other words, a lot of times on defense, you'll kind of 
seriously try to guard the man with the ball at like once he comes over half court. When you do a full court press, you will pick him up as soon as he gets the ball out of bounds, maybe even double team him, trap him, harass him. And the, the, the reason why you do this is you want to pick up your own defensive energy and intensity and you want to disrupt the opponent's offense because then it takes longer for them to get into their offense. Maybe they're shooting shots late in the, the shot clock. It just kind of mess them up and interrupt their flow. As I said, Jeremy had helped give the Lakers a great offensive flow in the third quarter, and Denver wanted to break that up. And so that's why they went to the full court press, and it 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 it, it was effective, I thought. Okay, then uh, going into let's see here. Yeah, I put again that that the Lakers were doing a good job helping out Jeremy on the tie loss and pick and roll plays. It's the middle of the third. And then I could you could continue to hear this fan or a couple different fans yelling at the players. It was just hilarious. It's it funny stuff. Now moving on late, excuse me, late in the middle of the fourth. Then moving on late in the fourth, Jeremy had the play of the game. It certainly would have been the play of the game if the Lakers had won. J- Ty Lawson drove on Jeremy, got down deep into the lane. Jeremy stripped him of the ball came racing out into a fast break situation. I think it was like a three-on-one. So there were three Lakers and one uh, Denver defender back, or maybe two Denver defenders back. Then he he did a look-away pass to Wesley Johnson, and Wesley Johnson dunked the ball over Danilo Gallinari in 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 transition. This is you'll see this on all the highlights and it was just an amazing play. It was a great dunk by Wesley and it was a great setup by Jeremy. So that was a fantastic play and that showed again Jeremy came back into the game with defensive aggressiveness and and offensive aggressiveness too. And that's good to see. Like I said he's 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 getting stronger mentally. He's regaining his his uh, assertiveness, and it's excellent to see. You could see Kobe went up and he, he praised Wesley for the dunk, and he praised uh, he praised Jeremy for the play. And like I said, it's nice to see Jeremy and Wesley doing well. They have the ability to play well. Just a matter of having the mind tuned in properly. And I think, you know, they seem to be friends, and I, I'm sure they get along well because they do seem to have relatively similar personalities and stuff, and it's, it's just good. That was just that was a tremendous play. It was definitely the play of the, of the night for the Lakers, for sure. Okay, then also late in the fourth, you could see Jeremy kind of directing the offense. And Kobe brought the ball up, and Jeremy was telling Jordan Hill and other guys, okay, you go here, go here, move here. It's just nice to see because said he has – taking more leadership, more command, and uh, it's very nice to see. Um, Then Jeremy did have two difficult defensive sequences late in the fourth, and they were both on switches. So these were not Jeremy's original defensive assignments. One was against Aaron Aflalo, and the other one was against Danilo Gallinari. So these guys both were able to hit shots against Jeremy. They're both bigger than Jeremy. Aaron's got a couple inches on him and Danilo's got a number of inches on him. So it's it's just a tough they're just tough sequences. Um and they were good plays by Denver, so you have to uh have to give them credit for that. But I also made a thing that right after that that says Byron's keeping Jeremy in for defense. And that's good to see because Jeremy had played good defense the entire game. So it's nice that 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 Byron did not take him out in the in late in the fourth quarter because it wasn't deserved 
up to that point in time. Then, as I said, the Lakers did have an opportunity with the last shot of the game, essentially, to actually, I think they get two last shots of the game in regulation, and uh, Kobe missed one, and the other one was basically a desperation heave by Nick Young. Okay, going into the overtime, Jeremy made an excellent steal, and then he was fouled. wasn't wasn't shooting, so he got no no free throw attempts. But it was a terrific play by him to get the steal. It was a really nice defensive play. Then Jeremy had his um, final score of the game. He did a little probe dribble. Then he did a fade away from the, the free throw line. Basically, that gave him seventeen points for the game. Then I put Jeremy's decisive. He's He's basically, as I said, Kobe was letting Jeremy run the offense here and kind of be the guy early in this overtime. And I, I look, that's fantastic. It wasn't, it didn't get everything done. It didn't, um, I don't think the, the Lakers scored much on it, but it was nice to see Jeremy being aggressive with it and Kobe was letting him do it. This is what we want to see. It's, it's it's going to be a process. But I thought it worked well there. So I said, I can't be super unhappy about this because there's a number of signs of progression here that are good. Okay. Then Denver took the lead, 90 to 88. And now Kobe took over. It's like, okay, I let you guys do your thing. Now I got to take over because we got to win. Or that that's the thinking anyway. And um, it, it didn't work that great. And they weren't able to kind of, they weren't able to do it. Then Danilo Gallinari hit a huge three-point shot. I think Denver got an offensive rebound. The ball was swung back out to Gallinari, who's an excellent shooter. And he was a couple feet behind the three-point line, and he drilled it. And that put Denver up 94 to 90 with one minute and 28 seconds left. Then Jeremy played good defense against Ty Lawson, really good. But Ty was able to hit a little fadeaway shot against Jeremy. And I think he had hit another shot couple moments earlier against Jeremy or a drive or something. So then that made it 96 to 92. And then Wayne Ellington came in for Jeremy. As I mentioned earlier, I don't, I think this was both a defensive switch and an offensive switch. Wayne's taller than Jeremy. So you want somebody with longer arms and more height to kind of get in uh, Ty Lawson's face. I think Wayne was, I'm not sure if Wayne was playing Ty on defense, but whoever was guarding Ty Lawson at that point in the game was taller than Jeremy was. And that was the point. And then Wayne had hit two three-pointers in the game and Jeremy had hit zero. And now you needed shooters out there. And so I think that's why Byron did it. And there wasn't that much time left in the game. I can't remember. It was like maybe like a minute left. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not angry or, or super mad about that. I understand why Byron did it. He was trying to win, and he just did. He just wanted to make a just try to get that done. It it didn't end up working out, but I, I understand why he did. It. I think there's I think there's a reasonable reason why it occurred so then that's basically it kobe missed a shot it was 98 94 kobe missed it and then that was basically about it and denver was able to kind of hang on hit their free throws and get the victory there so that's that's the summary again i'm you're never comfortable with the loss you don't never want to lose Given that the team did lose, I feel about as good as I could feel. Jeremy played well. He played well on offense. He played well on defense. His aggressiveness is getting better. His confidence is getting better. The team as a whole showed improvement. They definitely were better on defense. They're starting to become more organized on offense. 
Kobe is allowing Jeremy and others to do more. Wesley was aggressive. I, I like what I saw. They just weren't able to execute properly down the stretch. Basically, it was Kobe missed some shots. And look, I, I really don't have a problem with, with the way things went. The reason why Kobe gets a lot of shots late is because he's he's a good shot creator. He can generate better opportunities a lot of times than other guys can. And I, I understand why he took a lot of the shots late. He just didn't hit them. Sure, you could have done some different things, but I, I really didn't have a problem with the way he was playing. He just wasn't, he couldn't hit anything late. That was the problem. That was the main issue here. But I, I, I get what happened, and I get pretty much why it happened. And I said, overall, I, I'm pretty much at peace with this. I'm, let's, let's take the improvements that were visible tonight, and let's carry them on into the next game. That's what we need to do. And we're definitely going to need them in the next game because the next game is against the best team or the team with the best record in the NBA right now, and that's the Memphis Grizzlies. That game will take place on Wednesday, November 26th, which is the day before Thanksgiving here in the United States, and it will be at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, and it will be shown in the U.S. on NBA TV. Memphis is an excellent defensive team. They're coached well. Marcus Gasol is playing fantastic. He's he's an MVP candidate. It's going to be a heck of a test for the Lakers, but they need to they need to play like they played tonight. Disciplined on offense and on defense. They need a confident Jeremy. They need a confident Wesley. Hopefully, Carlos Boozer will be able to be able to play in that game, be available because they're going to need him. So, look, that's about it. Again, I'm I'm satisfied with what I saw. I'm actually pleased by what I saw. I'm not going to get not going to just throw Kobe under the bus and all this other stuff. I, I think the team played overall. They played well in this game. They, they're they're definitely improving. And so I'm happy about what I saw. It's not great that the team doesn't have a good record. They're 3-11, and blah, 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 blah. But given everything, given you have a new coach, a uh, new offensive system, a bunch of new players, new teammates, and the talent level isn't as good as many of the teams around the league in terms of youth and athleticism, Etc. I'm okay. I'm okay with where things are at. And again, as a Jeremy Lin fan, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. Eighth good game in the last 10 games. Clearly on the upswing. His confidence is rising. Just Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's what I want to see. Look, the last time we played Memphis this year, in Memphis, we only lost by five points. So the Lakers know they can hang with Memphis, as good as Memphis is. They know they they can be in that game. They can have a chance. Look, maybe they can catch Memphis a little off guard or not not fully taking the Lakers seriously. Let's see what we can do. Let's just, let's see what we can do. Okay, that is about it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, your comments below. We will put information in the video description below the video player so you can go check out highlights of this game. Also information so you can come and follow us on Twitter and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group if you would like to do that. Once again, I am PFV Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We do strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Many positives from this game. Many positives for Jeremy and for the team. I'm, like I said, I'm content. 
I, I like what I'm seeing from pretty much all sides. I, I'm i hoping, I know the team has been working out different players, like Quincy Miller, and I think they're supposed to work out Gal Meckle and uh, Dwight Bikes, some other guys. Hopefully we can get another another player or maybe even two in the time to come to kind of help up with the, the, the depth on the team and give the team some more options that they can run out there. But as I said, where everything is right now, I'm, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. So I'm, I really don't really, I'm not really upset about anything tonight uh, in terms of what I saw. And uh, I'm eager I'm eager for the Memphis game. I, I just I want to I want to let these guys just keep going out there and playing, and see see how things keep progressing. So that is it. I hope everybody's having a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care, hang in there, and let's just go, Lynn, go Lakers. Till next time, take care. We will talk to you again soon.